This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby and Assassin Build Number 4. I'm going to show you how to build that toughest plane on the planet. If your plane is not colored yet, now is a good time to put on the colored tape or other decorations that you want to do before you start cutting out your radio slots. Here's a list of the components we're going to install in the plane in this video. We're going to start by screwing the stainless steel motor mount onto the Formica plate. I'm using number six screws. Make sure that the screws nor the bomb drop hole is directly over the spar. We're going to measure back from the nose of the plane, two and a half inches for the battery and four and a half inches for the radio slot. If you want to move these to another location, that's fine, but as long as your center of gravity remains the same, the plane will fly well. We are going to cut a slot 10 inches wide where we're going to put the servos and the receiver and the speed control and put the battery in the front. So I like to cut with a soldering iron. You can cut with a box knife if you would like. Part of the reason we don't put extreme tape here is it's extremely difficult to cut through. And also cut a slot for your battery. Realize that the battery needs to be tight as you put it in this slot and so do your servos and receiver and speed control so that they don't come flying out during aerobatics and combat. You notice that I cut out the battery slot and then continued cutting deeper with my soldering iron. My battery is quite tight in there. I almost don't need the Velcro around it. It's so tight. I'm going to now mark position of the servos. Now this initial cut is for the body of the servo going down. And after I make sure that the body is fitting tight, I'm going to pull those out and cut a little bit deeper for the ends of the servos because I want the body of the servo to sit flush with the top of the wing with just the servo arm poking up slightly above the wing. Once you're, you have the servos fit the way you want them, glue them on the ends and on the upper part of the sides. You don't want the servos glued in so tight that you can never get them out without destroying the plane. These slots are for Velcro. A Velcro strap uh, will hold the battery and the radio in place. I've seen people also use plastic tape to hold them in place. The Velcro strap goes over the top of the battery and over the wires and the end of the ESC. I'm marking a slot for the receiver. And with the Velcro strap in place, I'm also marking where the, I need to enlarge the hole for this speed control. Once you've got the parts so that they fit how you want them, you can make small access cuts as needed to get it so your wires will fit also and uh, be tight on the plane. Now all the excess wire will be under the speed control and under the receiver. I use a screwdriver to enlarge the narrow holes where I might get over melt using this soldering iron. That extra enlargement there is for the Velcro strap to come through. We, are at, we will cut a vent hole around the speed control later to help it cool, but for right now we're just trying to get things positioned so everything fits and the wires reach. I'm going to put some glue under the Velcro strap that helps to keep you from losing your Velcro as you're headed out to your flying field. Bind your radio and make sure all your trims on your transmitter are set at zero. Then you're going to install the push rods in the second hole out from the center of your servo and line the wires push rods up so that they go straight back on your wing. You're going to cut some slits for the Elevon horns that point directly at the push rod on the servo.
turning the wing over, I'm going to enlarge the hole a little bit with my soldering iron. The reason I made that hole is so glue will have access to the sides of the horn to help hold it in place. On the top, I put a little more glue on the two sides of the Elevon horn. And I make sure that the pushrod wire is aligned with the horn before the glue cools. Let's do the other side. Put glue up the sides of the Elevon horn and put some on the top to make sure it stays secure. You'll need to slightly enlarge the hole in the top of the horn so that your easy connector will fit, but don't make it so big that it's sloppy. Notice that I put the snap ring on backwards. It holds as well as the other way, but it also fits the horn better. Let's do the other side. A pair of pliers snaps it right in place. We are now going to cut the wires off to length. Leave yourself about half an inch to three quarter inch length extra. We're going to turn the servo arms one tooth forward. This helps us so that our rolls are more axle. Going to do it on both sides. Then we're going to align the elevon with the back of the wing. Tighten it in so that it can't move. Align it so it's straight off the back angle of the wing. Tighten it up and then check it to make sure none of the linkages are flexing. On the midpoint of each push rod, I punch a hole with my soldering iron to put a wire guide in. The wire guide keeps the wire from flexing side to side or up and down. It needs to be fairly tight, but be careful as you glue it that you don't get glue overflow that comes up and sticks to the wire in the staple and binds up the servo and the elevon movement. This is a prop guard. I've got one on the top of, that, of the right side of the wing and the bottom of the left side of the wing. And it keeps the prop from tearing up the back of the wing. At this point, I'm setting the controls so they all move the right direction. When you pull back on the stick, both should go up. When you push to the right, the right elevon should go up. There are eight different combinations that are possible in the programming of your radio and also trading your elevator aileron plugs and only one will work. I'm now cutting a vent hole to allow air around the speed control so it doesn't overheat. Make sure you don't tape over the top of this so it gets no airflow. Installing the fins if you're building a plane that has fins. Cut a slit that's slightly above the top of the wing. Using a piece of the extreme tape and goop glue, I glue the fin to the end and extreme tape it in place. Thanks for watching. This is the end of video four. Total weight of the plane as shown is 19 ounces. Thanks for watching. Here's a list again of the different components we're using in the building of this plane.